thank you very much. Hey guys, how is everybody doing today? All right, well, this is the part where we get really pumped. I'm kidding, I'm not gonna do that to you. Everybody else is gonna do that to you. What I'm here to do is take about 50 minutes, I'm kidding, 15 minutes. We're gonna talk about 15 minutes about automating menial tasks in your data center. And I'm gonna do it a little bit different than you know doing the traditional, you gotta automate everything, and it's great. I wanna talk about things that you can automate with a solid fire system that I have yet to see quite possible um, with other solutions and things that get me really excited. You're gonna find, as I talk about this, I get really, really excited. Um, so a quick poll of everybody. How many people automate in their data centers? Excellent. PowerShell? Vrealize Orchestrator? Couple. Um, a different automation platform? Which one? Tidal. Tidal. Oh, man, you really like pain. <laughs> but regardless of the platform, one thing is consistent. The reason that we automate is because we're performing tasks that are consistently painful or time consuming or they're items that we need to ensure get completed consistently every single time. We want to make sure that it's right, we want to make sure that it's quick, and we want to make sure that we have time available to do other things. Um, Joining SolidFire, I come from a background where I really didn't deal with storage. I dealt with automation. My job was to make sure that more people were not needed to be hired in order to manage the environment. And I apparently did fairly well because I was the last new headcount in several of the places that I worked. And I was able to do that because I would identify tasks that were taking considerable amount of time or that were low-hanging fruit. Right, your real basic way of getting started. Now with SolidFire, one of the things that I tackled first and foremost was, let's say that we have this application server and it's sitting out here, this is SQL Server, everybody have SQL Server in their environment? Or MongoDB, we have our database systems. And this guy right here, that's our main database disk, right? That's got all of our database information on it. And you have an admin that comes over and he uh, you know, updates a new table and he doesn't index the table. And so when the next series of reports run, your performance, like this thing, is just dogging it. Well, with SolidFire, we have the opportunity to be able to modify the performance profile of the disk that is serving that application. So if this guy was sitting at 5,000 minimum IOPS, 7,000 maximum IOPS, and let's say burst of 9,000, but it's just hammering that performance, You'll see in a demo around the corner where I actually leverage PowerShell and the SolidFire tools for PowerShell and vSphere Power Actions, which is a fling from VMware, to where you can right click on the virtual machine, right click on that disk, and say, modify QoS. And when you do that, you are prompted for what those three new values are. And in our case, we're gonna, we're gonna change the minimum, we'll leave the minimum where it is, because it's already getting the minimum, but it, it needs more maximum, right? And we'll just, We'll just change that. And what that then does is it automatically changes the, the performance right here. Okay? Now that database system has more performance available to finish the task. You're not having to wait a lot of extra hours for that to happen. You don't have to move any data. So you have no negative impact on your infrastructure in order to accomplish that. And then when you're done, you can change it back. That's pretty neat, right? You just kind of simplified. But that's not really automating. So what we are now doing, and you can see also in the demo, is we're assigning storage policy-based management. And in the demo that we have, you can leverage PowerShell, or you can leverage vRealize Orchestrator. Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. You can leverage PowerShell or vRealize Orchestrator. You can actually go in and assign storage policies to the different data types. So for this particular data type, we would have a policy that would be MSQL, and then 5K, 7K, 9K, right? So the policy would have a name, it's meaningful, and then when you deploy in your next SQL Server database, or database system, you could assign that policy. And that policy is automatically created based on the performance characteristics of the solid fire volume, okay? So what we do is we attach an attribute to that guy right there. It's free, it's metadata. We scan that, we scan the QoS, which is 5, 7, and 9K, and we automatically create the policy. 
Okay? And you could create multiple data stores that match that policy. And then what ends up happening is, is your administrators and your consumers, the people who actually are provisioning virtual machines, they have the opportunity to select the policy that meets their needs and be able to change that policy. And on the back end, what do we do? We run automation that sees that there's a discrepancy. It sees that the volume characteristic does not match the policy characteristic, but that the policy wins. So we read in what the new policy is. And in this case, let's say that we had another policy. Let's say it was a maintenance policy, right? And it was 10K, you know, 12K, and 15K, right? It's a maintenance policy. We have maintenance windows. We change that policy. And then automatically, the volume underneath gets modified. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why this is really important is because this framework and the way that you manage storage in a vSphere environment using storage policy-based management is a requirement as you look to implement uh, vSphere virtual volumes. So VMware virtual volumes requires the use of storage policy-based management. Part of the reason it does that is because it, it leverages a VASA provider in order to provision the virtual volumes and to ensure that the virtual volume is being created in a storage container that is appropriate to the use case for that virtual volume. So at some point, this disk will become a virtual volume. And that virtual volume will be tied to a policy. Now that policy will be representative of the same policy that you had created before, except for now it's being managed through the virtual volumes. Right? So you've just efficiently managed on VMFS data stores and automatically create and manage all of the policies for your storage identical to what you would do with virtual volumes. So when you go to make that transition and you want to start running virtual volumes, all that your consumers and IT administrators have to do is change the policy and all the rest of the work is done for them. Kind of interesting, all right? Now there's another use case that we hit pretty often. Let's say you get solid fire in your, how many people have solid fire in their systems today, in their environments today, right? Okay, so let's say we change that. Let's say you get solid fire in your system. Um, how many hours does it take to bring in a new storage platform into the environment? Generally a number. Sometimes, some places it's weeks. With solid fire, and we have the demo around the corner, I can actually take a net new solid fire system and you show me a cluster, a vSphere cluster, all I need is the name. It has to be a legit name. And I could provision all of the volumes automatically into that cluster in under 60 seconds. That's connections, that's creation, that's creation of accounts, the volumes, the volume access groups to help manage it, and adding it as VMFS data stores. Beyond that, if you think ahead a little bit about what you want, you can define the attributes that you want for each one of those data stores. And have, there's, a, there's another function that's there that we are demoing that will automatically create, like I described, all of the policies that are associated with it. You, I can show you how you can implement SPBM into your environment on a solid fire system in under two minutes. And you have to write two lines of code. You have to provide six values. That's all that's required. Now, the reason I bring this up and highlight it is, one, it's an opportunity because this, this is not an interactive PowerShell video console, right? Um, and it is what I started demo. But it's just uh, scratching the surface of the things that are possible by leveraging PowerShell. We also have the capability of leveraging the UCS power tool. Anybody familiar with uh, PowerShell for Cisco UCS? So let's say that your applications have, are residing or you have in our multi-tenant environment VLANs that are specific to those data store types. There's additional work that can be there. That can all be automated. What this ends up providing for your environment is not just the ability to provision those things and get them right quickly, but with the same calls and the same capabilities to make sure that it maintains that consistency. Make sense? Now, do you think doing things like that would buy you a little bit more time in your day? Yeah? I. Um, I, I was interviewing for a job a number of years back, and somebody was like, tell me about the best project that you ever did. I was like, I was drinking coffee. I like, what do you mean? I was like, the best work I ever do is when I'm drinking coffee. Because I've written something, it's running, it's correct every time, everything's consistent, and I don't have to worry about anything getting mucked up because you know, I fat-fingered it, I was tired. 
best work I ever do is when I'm drinking coffee. And that should be something that I think everybody should be aspiring towards. Because in order to automate all the things, you have to have a couple of things. You have to have extensibility, you have to have the tools that will allow you to automate, and you have to have the use case. You put those two things together and you can consider change, change the way you operate your environments considerably. And I think that puts me right on time. Oh, I actually have a couple more minutes. Fantastic. So um, another use case to kind of think about when, when you're looking at automating, because again, I'm not really a storage guy. I'm kind of a problem solving guy. Like how, how do I you know, simplify how things are being managed so that you know, I don't run into issues? So anyone running VDI in their environment? Couple? So about every morning is when everybody's booting up. It's usually about an hour window that everybody's coming in. Does it run a little bit slower? during those times? Does it impact anybody else when that happens? No. With SolidFire, we have an opportunity to do a, another thing that's really kind of interesting. You can leverage PowerShell uh, and the SolidFire tools for PowerShell and say that these volumes right here, and we'll just say these guys right here are for VDI, all right? So these are for VDI. I think I had a VDI. Yeah, here we go. So these guys are for VDI. And that at 8 a.m., Every morning, we're going to increase the performance capability on that, right? We want, to, we want to double up how many IOPS are available to that data store at 8 o'clock in the morning. So the boot ups happen faster. And then at 9 a.m., when most everybody's logged in and got there, your times are specific to you, you can lower it down. That's a number one. You can lower it back down to normal levels. You can do that with a single line of, of PowerShell that just sits on a scheduled task. You don't actually have to be involved at all. Take that line of thinking and then start thinking about this guy right here. Does this guy get backed up in the evenings? Right? That's, that's mission critical information. Doing those backups has an impact on your infrastructure, has an impact on the resources. So doing that faster is valuable. Well, since the VDI environment isn't running at high speed at the same time as your database environment because everybody's gone home during your backup window, you could actually take this disk, and I'm just going to move it up here for the simplicity of having the conversation. During the backup windows, you can have a scheduled task that will modify the performance characteristics of the data stores that are being backed up so that they can be replicated and backed up faster. Okay? Extending that just a little bit more, if you have two solid fire clusters and you're doing replication, and your core replication windows are at specific times, you can modify the QoS on one end, modify it on this end to ensure that it has more performance capabilities to finish those processes faster, right? And these are all things that you can schedule and just define based on the use cases that you have in your environment so that your change windows become shorter, right? When you have issues, you can get those issues resolved faster because you're no longer having to just wait because you can't modify the infrastructure that's supporting it, right? And then being able to deliver better performance and better services to the people that are reliant on your infrastructure. And then doing that all in an automated fashion. Does that sound kind of useful? Maybe save some time in your day? And then you can have more time to ride that bike. So. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. If anybody has any questions, um, we do have our demo over here where I kind of showcase a lot of the PowerShell work that uh, I've done. I've got a lot more stuff that I'm working on that falls in line with these things. I'd be very interested in talking with you if you have any questions. And best of luck on winning the bike. I hope, I hope one of you get it. I rode, it, I rode one of those uh, about two weeks ago, and it's, it's kind of fun. So thanks a lot. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you.